On a day where the averages got slammed by the post-Fed meeting wave of profit-taking that I warned you about earlier in the week, you know what managed to go 2% higher today? How about Workday, WDAY? That's the cloud-based provider of software for human capital management, payroll, and financial management. In other words, Workday gives companies the applications they need to automate many of their non-revenue-generating back-office functions, allowing them to save money by, for example, yes, laying off workers in their HR department. That's the winning formula we've seen over and over again out here in Silicon Valley. However, Workday's stock has had a rough time of it lately, getting crushed by the big August sell-off in all things that were growth-related, and then getting hit again at the end of August after the company reported a good but not perfect quarter, where the analysts were concerned about Workday's weaker-than-expected billings guidance, not the billings themselves. I think these worries could be overblown, as they reflect a change in how the company charges its customers, and not a change in the trajectory of the business. Plus, with the stock nearly $25 off its highs, I think it's becoming very intriguing for those who like young, super growth companies. Now, yesterday at Salesforce.com's huge Dreamforce conference, I got the opportunity to speak with Anil Bushri. He's the co-founder and CEO of Workday. Take a look. And you, know, you had an incredible quarter. It's more than 50% growth. Everyone seemed to focus on guidance, Piper, weak guidance, Jeffrey's confounding guidance, Opco, two year, uh, because of guidance, not sure where you're going over two years, overshadowed by guidance. Can you just kind of do a do over about what happened given the fact that the quarter was so good? Sure. So, as you mentioned, we had a great quarter, uh, over 50% growth in uh, total revenue, subscription revenues, billings. And, uh, you know, I think Wall Street derives too much from calculated billings because terms change from quarter to quarter. One large deal where we have a different set of billing terms does impact billings. Uh, we feel like we're going to have a very strong second half of the year. The pipeline looks very strong. Uh, customer satisfaction is very high. And uh, I think people read too much into billings. Okay, well, the stock itself sometimes defines the story. And uh, Mark Peake, your CFO, said we could be profitable if we choose to, uh, choose to do so. But we believe we have significant more opportunity in front of us than behind us. Do you think that that kind of talk is now scaring people, that people want profitability now? You know, all of our large public investors, the ones that are in it for the long run, they're encouraging us, keep taking market share, keep taking market share, don't slow down. We don't want to see you profitable. We're generating cash. So I think the worry for some of the recently minted public companies that don't have enough cash to, to stay afloat, that, they're in a very different bucket. We got $2 billion of cash and we're generating cash. This is a once in a lifetime uh, land grab and we have to take advantage of and it. And you believe like Mark Benioff at Salesforce that the goal is to go one billion to two billion as fast as possible and two billion to three billion. That's your wrap, right? Yeah, it's actually uh, very, very similar to Mark taking a page out of his book. Went from zero to hundred million, hundred to billion. And our goal right now is a billion to three billion. And we're working really hard to map out how we get from a billion to three billion. Obviously beyond just now human resources, human capital management, talking about a full suite. When you go into a Pfizer, which is the largest pharmaceutical company, how did you approach it and what do you have there? Well, there we have the, uh, the full HR suite. Uh, we have a lot of pharmaceutical companies that are very happy Workday customers like J&J, &J, uh, GSK, Amgen. So we, we've pretty much taken over that market. Pfizer went through a fairly detailed evaluation and chose Workday. Uh, I'm the executive sponsor. That, will, that project will go well. I will make sure that that one goes well. But you know, we're running at 97% customer satisfaction. Almost all of our projects go well. Well, let's talk about that because uh, Oracle reported the other day. And what did they say? Well, they said they, there were four mentions of Workday. They're all about how it, when business comes up, they win it from you. I, I don't recall you losing any customers to Oracle. No, and, and either do I. You know, when we, when we compete for new customers, we beat them more than they beat us. For sure, and that's always been the case. And uh, our win rates in Q2 were some of the highest we've seen over the last 12 months. And renewal rates? All, pretty much 100%. Not bad. And, and when you think about the uplift from new products, higher than 100%. Okay, now, well, a company that we absolutely love is Avago. And why? Because they're acquisitive, they develop, uh, perhaps I think they take more and more mind share, market share, and they also, when they acquire, uh, it's difficult to figure out human capital management. Is that why you they went to work day? You know, when you're a large global company and you're dealing with employees across the globe, you're dealing with complex organizational changes, the legacy products just don't work. And our product is, is perfectly suited for those kinds of organizations, which is why we have so many of the large Fortune 500 companies on the Workday platform. But one of the things that surprised me is, is I, I got, when you look at the arc of a conference call, you were doing some pretty interesting things in financial. I do my own work because I obviously have worked on Wall yeah. Street. I know that Morgan Stanley, for instance, is a very happy customer. Uh, and that's a huge account because that's, again, a combination with Citi. But you never mention any financial. So I think people may think maybe they don't have any big financial. Well, so, uh, so Morgan Stanley is a financial services customer. Right. 
Uh, they're not yet a customer for the financial product line. Okay. So for the financial product line, we have some we have some big companies in the pipeline. We only said about four months ago that we were really ready to take on Fortune 500 companies for, right. for financials. Right. And the pipeline doubled quarter over, uh, from Q3 to Q2, the pipeline doubled, which, which I haven't seen in a long time in any company. We do have some big names. Uh, Chuck E. Cheese is one of our favorite customers, right. Lifetime Fitness. Netflix runs all of our financial products. And so there are quite a few names. When you get to like the Fortune 20, Fortune 100, they're coming. You'll see them in the in the next few quarters. Right, last question. We're in San Francisco. Uh, it's obvious that people uh, are in demand. Computer science, computer engineer. If your stock does not climb, will it hurt you in getting the right people? You know, I don't. I don't think so. I think in the long run, our stock is going to continue to do well. We're building a company for the long run, and it's about building great products and uh, having happy customers. We're better than our competitors at both of those. And I think what we're really better than them at is, is having a great culture. We're, we've been one, voted one of the best companies to work for seven years in a row. And, you know, stock prices are at a point in time. If you believe in the future and you believe in our space, we're very early on in this space. It's a great opportunity. I totally agree with you. Totally agree with you, Anil. Okay, that's Anil Bushri. He's the co-founder and CEO of Workday. Go through the conference call. Go through the research. It's making a ton of sense to me at these prices. It's David Kramer. Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.